Hi, I'm Julie White um, here at Broadway.com to answer your questions, even though I'm not on Broadway. I'm off Broadway at the Laura Pels Theater, but you know, it's like Broadway adjacent. It's over there at 46 between 6th and 7th. I'm doing a show called The Understudy until January 17th, and come see it. It's delicious. Oh my gosh, Russell. You know, I was just so drunk. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I really wasn't. Um, oh gosh, I, that, was, that was really fun. I'm so glad you liked the speech because I realized it was kind of loud. And um, it was just, I just remembered having this feeling like, get out of Dodge. You have got to be kidding me when, when they said my name. Well, the ones I'm working with now, so, so sexy. I mean, Justin Kirk is so sexy, he kind of throws me for a loop. It's those eyes. And um, Mark Paul, just come see it. The, the, the jeans are just worth the price of admission alone. The kid rides his bike like 50 miles at a pop, so it's given him the tuchus of the gods. He's, uh, and you know, besides the fact that they're fantastic in the show, wonderful actors. I recently, while hosting the, um, I don't think this counts as working with somebody, but I got to stand on the same stage with that Daniel Craig. Y'all, stop it, what is that? And um, to be a little cliche, when I found George Clooney, everything that you expect George Clooney to be. Well, Linda, <laughs> As you sit at home wondering why you're not me. <laughs> I'll say that they are, uh, the experience of kissing both of those fellows is uh, delicious, but the, the, this, in the play, for my character Roxanne, um, the situation is much more fraught with um, Justin. So that kiss is much more emotional, and the kiss with Mark Paul is just hot. Hot. <laughs> yes. Oh, hell's yes. Who wasn't? Um, but I have, uh, I, you'll, you'll be shocked to find out that I have an almost adult child. And so she is 23, so she was like the target Saved by the Bell age. So we watch Saved by the Bell, but constantly. Like, I, I knew, a, I have a screech doll. Oh, Audrey, I have no idea which Transformer is which. I just call them all, you know, Mega Death or something. Um, I, I guess in that last movie, I liked that old rickety one. What was his name? Was that Star Screamer, Search Jet Man? I don't know, whatever. Uh, and and uh, But I love them all because they um, have, you know, they make it possible for me to do plays off Broadway <laughs> for no money. Oh, someone is aware that I acted with cavemen. I thought we really slipped that under the radar. Nobody, nobody noticed that I was on cavemen. Except for New York Magazine did a thing to save cavemen that you were supposed to clip off your own body hair and put it in an envelope and send it to whatever network that was, ABC, CBS. Those guys are so adorable. And that makeup and that experience was so gruelingly horrible that I think it's, it's all for the best that, uh, that, that they don't have to do that because they should all become, you know, mondo famous with their own faces. Although I really had fun with them. <laughs> that play, like The Understudy, uh, was by Teresa Rebeck and she wrote it sort of specifically for me. And um, those were my dates. Like, I basically told her my horrible dating stories and she just put them in a play. So I actually went to dinner, dinner, first time to go to dinner with the human being who told me that he had chronic colitis, which made it impossible for him. We were talking about, you know, how you're like, do you have any hobbies? And I was like, well, I like to ski. Do you like to ski? And he's <laughs> something like that he couldn't ski anymore because of his chronic colitis. And so all I could picture was this guy like shushing down the mountain, just <laughs> and you know, it was horrible, dinner was over. 
Oh, so I think the Kaleidos guy maybe was the worst. I don't know, Will, do you have some, I'm always looking for an exit strategy. Do you have a, some other career for me, maybe? I kind of thought about being a, a lawyer, when, because growing up in Texas, everybody's a lawyer. Especially in Austin, everybody's a lawyer. And I thought I could be a trial lawyer and, you know, try cases and that sort of thing. But, no, I didn't do that. And I, I've always sort of, I, I'm a great gardener, and I would love to be a landscape designer. But also, I have a big ranch in Texas, and the terroir is very similar to Umbria. And I've thought, maybe I could get out there and plant grapes and become a winemaker. So, yeah, I, got, I, got, I don't know if I'd be good at any of those things, though. So, that's always a crapshoot, right? Well, Daniel, is it you, Daniel Craig? We're very close, but she's never home, so, you know, come on over. If I had any parenting advice, be honest with your children and let them have their feelings. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, let them have their feelings. Because sometimes, you know, kids are like, oh, third grade is hard, I hate it. And you want to just say, do you know how good, you know, the whole, like, I walked barefoot in the snow. Don't say any of that. Just say, I hear you, third grade is hard. That's all they want, is just to be, to have their feelings validated. That's my advice. What do they say, Elliot? What do they say? Tom Robbins said that we're descended from aliens in his book, Still Life with Woodpecker. Is that what you're referring to? Or something about carpet and drapes? I don't know. So I'll say, yes, it's true. It's all true. <laughs>Oh, Lee, I really like this question. Because, you know, I, you, when I started out in the theater, I sang. Like, my first show I ever did was Guys and Dolls, and, and then the show that kind of got me to New York, I did The Baker's Wife in Austin, and then they saw me do it. I mean, I could sing. It was fun to sing. But then I got self-conscious about it or something. Like, I felt like the people who sing on Broadway are so good that I wasn't good enough. So I would have to do one of those talky sing musicals. I could do one of those Lauren Bacall kind of roles. What is it that we're living for? Applause, applause, like that. <laughs> so maybe that one, or MAME. Could I do MAME? I wanna do MAME, or Hello Dolly, could I do that? I mean, Carol Tanning doesn't really sing, does she? Could I, could I get away with that? You let me know. All right, Sherry, um, my current obsession, sadly, is the downfall of my hero, Tiger Woods. I am so, I am so shocked every day when I read something, because I held him in such high esteem, like I have a little Tiger doll, a bobblehead in my dressing room. I had like a little shrine to Tiger with a candle when his knee was, you know, needing to recover. I've watched him play golf and just like wept when, you know, when he won the U.S. Open on the bum knee. And now I'm like, he what? He did what? Who? Why? Or why do all the girls look the same? It's so sad. <laughs> so Sherry, I guess that's my negative obsession. But on a more positive note, I have made a lot of handmade Christmas ornaments that are decorating my dressing room that are all cutouts of Robert Pattinson's face that Edward did from the Twilight movies. And I've gotten the glue gun and, you know, glued it and there's like glitter and they're all up all over the place. So we're having a very happy Robmas over at, over at the understudy. And Gosselaar and Kirk are really upset and jealous that there's no pictures of them. Just, just Rob. Thank you very much for asking questions. I was afraid I would show up and nobody would have asked a question. So I appreciate your questions very much. Um, please come see me in the understudy and uh, have a happy Robmas.